there, everyone, and welcome to the Women in Sectional Title Soundbite. Today, we have Michael Schaefer on board uh, from Zedfin to talk to us about the role of the Executive Managing Agent. Hello, Michael. How's it, Marina? How are you doing? Good, good. All well, thank you. And as we Excellent. were saying, well into the swing of, of this year. Absolutely, already February. It's crazy. Absolutely. So today we're talking about executive managing agents, a term that's quite um, misunderstood, I'm finding at the moment, and there's a lot of interest around it in our industry. So when this legislation first came out, bringing in the executive managing agent role, I think a lot of people were concerned about what it means for the industry. Is it a threat to managing agents? Um, I'm going to take you through, and you, you need to tell me what your view is of an executive managing agent, and also tell me how Zedfin has taken the opportunity to become a, an executive managing agent in certain buildings and your challenges. So first off, executive managing agent for our listeners, what does it mean? Okay, thanks Marina. Yes, um, well, as we know, the, 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 the executive managing agent role came about in 2016 with a change in the ledge. And, you know, even to this day, we're finding that there's a lot of sort of, you know, misunderstanding in terms of exactly what the executive managing agent is. You know, I might be biased, but I really do think it is a non-brainer. And, you know, managing agents certainly have got nothing to fear. In actual fact, I think they should embrace the executive managing agent role um, in that the, the executive managing agent works in tandem with the managing agent. All the executive, executive managing agent does is to replace or to assume the roles and the responsibilities of the trustees. So I'm sure all managing agents know about, you know, trustee boards that can't make decisions, they meet after hours, um, you know, the more I typically find in my days as an EMA, the more people there are, the harder it is to make a decision because everyone's got an opinion, their egos, and, and, and. The EMA role, theoretically, it's someone who knows what they're doing, who's got the requisite sort of skill to, to run a business, which is in essence what trustees are doing, and does it as a priority and is paid to do it. And, you know, it's nonsensical when you think that, you know, we have a trillion rand industry that's run by you know, volunteers with no minimum level of education is done after hours, typically managed by the MA with the lowest quote. I mean, it's, you know, to me, you know, we're running a business, you know, the asset values are, are potentially hundreds of millions of rands. And, you know, it should be a priority. You know, we should be making decisions or discussing things at nine o'clock on a Monday morning, a Tuesday morning. You know, it should be focused. You know, there should be no time wasted. You know, time is precious. And, you know, that's exactly what it is. So the EMA certainly does not replace the managing agents. They purely assume the roles and the responsibilities of the trustees. So Zedfin, you know, we have a, you know, we've got a fair bit of capacity amongst myself and my team. And so it was an obvious extension to our sort of service offerings. It's only as far as I know, the larger managing agents that are offering the EMA service. Um, you know, in, in my opinion, and look, I, you know, when I was at Trafalgar, I sort of argued slightly to the contrary, but, you know, we structured it in such a way to mitigate the, the risk. But, you know, there, there is a conflict of interest to perform both because your, your trustees, you know, give instruction to the managing agent, managing agent takes instruction. And I feel it's quite important to have a, a, segrega a segregation in that duty because the one does sort of keep an eye on the other if you, if you think about it. So, you know, we, we structured it slightly different to try and mitigate this. But, you know, so as far as I know, we are the only sort of organization 100% impartial um, that is performing or is offering the function. Because to me, it, it's, it, I, my livelihood doesn't depend on it. It's just sort of, you know, allocating excess capacity. Mm. But, you know, I really do think that it's, it's a very, very exciting, um, you know, not even a concept, but a, a very exciting sort of role. And, you know, certainly one that is, is you know, should be embraced. Um, you know, within the industry, and certainly managing agents should should welcome it. You know, yeah. dealing with someone who knows what they're doing, it certainly saves time. It's it helps. But say, for example, you've got trustees now who are listening to you, and their interest has been perked up, and they say, "You're right. This sounds like a good idea." What 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 would they have to do? You know, how would they go about um, sort of forcing this body corporate to get executive managing agents? Um, or maybe nobody so wants to stand to be yeah, a. So you can't you can't force it upon members. I mean, you know, it's, it's Reg Twenty Eight. It says you know the members need to pass a special resolution appointing a, an executive manager agent and i think you know that's there in the beauty you know i've seen csos's position on on emas the linda's asked me to to write an article which which i'm i'm looking quite forward to um you know i, I don't understand how we're saying contracts two-year one-year contracts whatever the story is in my mind 
the legislation is quite clear. You pass a special resolution. On the passing of a special resolution, EMA is appointed. The nice thing is we know there's no indemnity. You're fully liable. You should have the indemnity covers and, and, and. And, you know, you dismiss the executive manager agent as quickly as you as you appoint them. You know, if you don't, the members don't feel that they're performing the, the, the task sort of correctly or in line with sort of expectation. You know, you hold a special general meeting and you, you basically elect trustees and dismiss the, the EMA. So to me, it's, a, it's very nice. Um, you know, it's very easy. There's no lock-in period. Um, you know, the EMA is still bound by all the regulations and, and, and the prevailing legislation. So it's not like administration where, you know, you kind of sign your life away and sort of hope for the best. Look, in certain circumstances, it is necessary. But I feel the EMA is a very nice blend sort of between the two and really to address that apathy, um, you know. And again, you know, it's impartial objects of professional management. You know, that's what it is. I'm sure trustees, you know, you've got your neighbor who's in arrears. You need to push the, the proverbial on legal action, you know, potential attachments, you know. And, and then the same thing, you know, when it comes to, you know, adherence to rules, you know, your neighbor's dogs or, you know, alterations. And we all know how frequently you know, rules are bent to suit, suit certain parties. So again, I really like, the, you know, the objective, you know, the objective, you know, sort of position that the EMA does for. And I mean, it's interesting. I mean, we're only performing the function for two schemes at the moment. And I mean, I can categorically tell you that we are more than self-funding in, 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 in each instant, just in terms of, you know, allocating spend correctly, uh, making sure the insurances are done correctly, that they aren't being fleeced. Um, you know, do, getting work done correctly, getting the requisites to the professionals in, um, and just, you know, you know, yeah, we, we more than sort of cover our fee, which is, you know, sort of quite minimal um, in any of it. But it really does, you know, provide that objectivity and that impartiality, which, you know, I think is critical. And I mean, trustees don't want to be a judge, you know, or have to be the ones that enforce rules on their owners. And, that, you know, yeah. it's, it's that type of thing. I know that's, you know, and that's before we get on to the, you know, the actual management of the business you know, sort of, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So there, there, yeah. was one, there was one issue when all this came out, and I remember asking a question at one of the very large like seminars, I can't remember if it was NAMA or one of the seminars, and I said, well, out of this audience of managing agents, who would like to be an executive managing agent? And nobody put their hands up. That was at the very beginning. Um, and when I asked them why, they said, well, you know, you've got this uh, responsibility, but there's joint obligation so that it's not only taking on it's not like you're like a, just a like a promoted ex managing agent it means that you're actually taking on the liabilities that other trustees also face so that's, that's, that's uh, i think it's um uh, management for 28 uh, 3a one of them. so <laughs> how do you how do you um get past that i know you mentioned indemnities and and things like yeah, that so we've you know, we've got, I'm not scared of, I'm not scared of the liability because, you know, to me, it's, it's you know, we, the legislation is quite clear in terms of what needs to be done. And we just ensure that it is done. And, and a lot of it is, is kind of common logic, you know, but again, you know, we don't, we, you know, I don't run it, you know, if, if we need a maintenance plan for, you know, hypothetically, you know, I'm not going to get a glorified, you know, handyman to come in and drop a plan. You know, I'm going to pay the, the correct amount of money and I'm going to get it professionally done. And then we're going to ensure that it's, you know, it's managed professionally and, you know, the costs and the budgets are all set correctly and so on and so forth. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. One of the first schemes that I was in EMA for, which goes back to my Trafalgar days, you know, I only lasted a month, you know, because they appointed me because no one could make a decision and no one wanted to be a trustee and they were all sort of been fighting, which is, you know, all too prevalent in, in the industry as we know. And then as soon as I appointed, you know, to address the critical, you know, or the backlog of maintenance works that everyone sort of found an opinion. So it was like, okay, well, that's fine. I'm calling a special general meeting. And now, you know, you guys are all interested now. So that's great. There's no need for me. And I resign. Yeah. You know, when I say I resign, you know, we appointed trustees and I left. So, you know, so, yeah, it's, it's it, you know, I, I don't, I don't think, I'm not scared of the, of the liability. You know, it's a question of running a business. Your levy is a function of your expense. So you need to make sure you've got enough money in the bank. Yes. You know, you chase the arrears, you do the maintenance, you know, you make but sure that everything... talk about that. Sorry, I just want to just talk about that a yeah. little bit because I'm given to understand that in terms of the legislation, there's certain prerequisites and certain things you have to do procedurally. You know, I think like a quarterly report. Just take us through yeah. those daily things you have to uh, do. Yeah, so the Act, the Act requires that you give a quarterly report to, to all members and you do a semi-annual inspection of, of the common property. So the reality is there's no way that you can run a scheme giving a quarterly report. Well, I suppose you can, 
But, you know, I find it easier or we find it easier, me and my team, is to give, you know, sort of monthly reports. You know, I think that, yeah. I think CSOS came out with the directives and they say sort of a monthly, a monthly report now on the management accounts. And, you know, that's easy. That's a click of a button because your MA should be producing sort of management accounts. So we would simply get them, go through the management accounts, make sure we have, we have a meeting with the, the managing agent, which we do online at nine o'clock in the morning. You know, it's literally half an hour. Bang. We bang that out to members. But we also give a report in terms of all the salient you know, points and actions, you know, what we're busy with. And it almost works like an action, like a live sort of action mode, you know, to keep members abreast. And, you know, you know, each scheme is different, but it's not, you know, like, you know, the one scheme in Hyde Park, you know, a very well capitalized scheme. Um, you know, I've got the garden committee and the previous trustees, you know, they're very interested, they're passionate about, about the scheme. And so I work quite closely with them, you know, but they quite like the fact that they don't need to be the bad person, um, you know, that I make the, the hard decisions and, you know, and, you know, there was a bit of a nasty element in that scheme, which, you know, I've since sort of won over because I think they were a bit frustrated with sort of slow decision making and, um, you know, the like. But, you know, it was quite simple. You know, I just enforced rules objectively and, you know, anyone gives me attitude. I'm like, well, you know, they're your rules. You know, if you don't like them, you know, in actual fact, I've got the SGM next week to reconsider the rules. So, you know, I just, I just enforce, you know, what is in place. You know, it's, 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 quite, it's quite easy. So, um, yeah, so I don't, yeah, so, you know, we embrace it and we think we add a lot of value and, you know, it's certainly not done as a, as a volunteer where, you know, people must be thankful for my time, you know, we get paid. Um, I would argue too little, but anyone in this industry who says it gets paid correctly, you know, I'd look at them like they, they've gone bonkers. So, you know, but yeah, it's... it's but what do you think? What would that fee be? Is there, I mean, I don't want to know the exact fee, but the percentage... So we charge... It, no, so we charge... No, no, we charge... We've got a minimum fee of five and a half thousand. Um, and it's really based on a time, on a time, on a time span. So it's, it's you know, it's a thousand rand an hour plus 500 rand for Sundays. I mean, that's, that's the truth of it, you know, which is a thumb suck. But, you know, it, I think it's actually proving to be, you know, about right. So, you know, I've been keeping accurate tra time trackers on the schemes we've got. And as would be expected, you know, when they come on, there's like a spike because you need to like go through and get a fade and then deal with the details. So I think the first, the first two months, I spent over 20 hours on, on the one scheme. And, you know, that's now settled down to about five and a half hours. So we, we, we pretty much right, you know, but we almost, you know, we sort of eight, nine months down the line. So, you know, things have stabilized and it becomes, you know, the regular, you know, sort of, you know, decisions and just sort of tracking the projects that, that are in place. And again, you know, we work with the managing agent. Someone needs to do the work. So, you know, and the heavy lifting, which, you know, is the managing agent. But I think, you know, the managing agent welcomes us because they don't need to explain to us. We understand the legislation. We know what their job is. We know what our job is. And, you know, again, no after our meetings, you know, literally, you know, budget meeting, you know, sort of 40 minutes, uh, monthly management account review, maybe 30 minutes, um, you know, quick, easy, to the point. And, you know, and a lot of the challenges, you know, we, you know, in this scheme in any event, you know, exclusive use areas, you know, common property that's effectively being made into exclusive use, you know, we're regularizing all of that, you know, the steps to take. Um, you know, so, you know, you get a bit of sort of pushback from, from some owners when they see some of the costs that have been involved, although we do it cost of, as cost effectively as possible. Um, but, you know, if they don't like us, it, you know, at all times, it's a question where we can have a special general meeting at any time. You know, we don't need to be, you know, we're certainly not forcing ourselves on anyone, you know, and, you know, and they've also obviously got the option to go to CSOS if they want to, but we would never stay if, if, you know, we didn't and if we didn't feel we were adding value. So, um, yeah, so five and a half grand is, is the minimum and it's purely based on a time basis. And, you know, I don't think that the time should differ, you know, from scheme to scheme. You know, we have a set of questions and it's really, you know, the, the degree of infighting, you know, that, that is, is a potential, you know, a variable that we'd need to examine. So we're looking, we're just consulting for scheme and case on now at the moment um, with a view to going on to EMA where they, I think they've got about 40 odd uh, CSOS, apps, CSOS cases at the moment, you know, so there, you know, we might sort of, you know, say, well, right, you know, let's rather go in a little bit higher, we can always revise downwards down the line, you know, so it's really just a time span. Can I just talk about CSOS uh, very quickly, because, you know, mm -hmm. am I correct in saying if I'm a managing, if, if I'm a, a, a part of a minority as, a, as an owner in a building, so you, we're not going to get a special resolution to appoint a managing agent, but I'm part of the minority and I really desperately want a managing agent to be appointed, um, you would then get a 25% uh, re, uh, you know, support resolution from those owners and then you could go to CSOS 
who would who would then appoint the the executive managing agent? Yeah, well, my, my understanding, uh, yeah, they get the twenty five percent, then they go to CSOS. I haven't actually seen CSOS make give an order to the effects of the appointments of an EMA. I suspect we, we're busy with one at the moment. I suspect they'll, you know, they'll go through their process, you know, to do an investigation and then sort of, you know, make a make a, a finding or what adjudication after going through the process. Um, I think if CSOS is going to, you know, give the order, I think they'll appoint an EMA on their panel. Uh, we aren't on the CSOS panel. Um, for one or two reasons, but um, yeah, I mean, yeah, that 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 would be the sort of the two options. Okay, well, thank you so much, Michael. There you have it from the horse's mouth. I, I think it's a, probably an opportunity for managing agents, and no need to feel threatened by the appointment of executive managing agents. And then again, Michael, thank you so much for your time, and thank you for your support of Women in Sectional Title. Perfect. Thank you very much, Marina. I appreciate that. And cheers to the listeners.